Okay, hey everyone, this is David Brown, and here I'm going to show you how I go through a nocturnal flight call recording. So, what I did was I took a, an audio file from my recorder, transferred it to my computer, and went through the steps to convert it to a mono file. I have another video that goes through that process. So now what I'm doing is I drag and dropped a WAV file into Ravenlight 2.0, which is the software I use to go through nocturnal flight calls. When you open a file, it gives you this pop-up. What we want to do is, instead of opening the entire sound, which is almost seven hours long, we want to page the sound, meaning we want to look at a little piece at a time. We can adjust the page size. Normally, when I do it during times of peak migration, I go 10 seconds at a time. So we'll type in 10. Page increment, I just leave at 90%. And step increment, 10. I just leave those the default and I don't change anything else. So we can click OK. And this file is from May 22nd, 2017 and was recorded at my house in Montoursville, Pennsylvania. So this is what it looks like when I go through a recording of nocturnal flight calls. We can already see these are probably Swainson's thrushes here. Uh, the software I'm using to record, I can't actually get sound from my computer only the sound of me talking. So I won't be able to actually play any of these calls, but I'll go through and show you how I use the software. So when it comes up, the one important thing is up in the top right here, you have these arrows. And when you click them, that's what actually pages you through the audio. Okay, so you can go forward and backwards. Or if you've clicked forward a couple times, you can then just use the space bar to go through. So for understanding what we're looking at, this bottom section is the spectrogram itself. So time is from left to right. Again, we're seeing 10 seconds of time. And left, or up and down, over on the left-hand side, we see kilohertz. So we go from zero up to about 11 kilohertz. These darker areas that we're seeing, those are calls. Again, they're probably Swainson's thrushes. Um, we can see at the very low end, the frequencies are cut out. That's because our microphone has a, um, a high pass filter. It's cutting, or a low cut filter, whichever way you want to say it. So it's cutting out the lows. But we still get this peak at about uh, one kilohertz, which is just the, the rumble of traffic. This line in the middle at about five kilohertz, that's just insect noise, just some sort of cricket chirping. And this one is probably the same thing. This vertical line here is just probably something clanging, just some random noise. In this top section, we have basically how loud it is. So you can see there's when this clang happened, we have a peak. When we get the calls, actually this peak here is probably from some low pitch thing. Here we can see we get a bit of a, a peak in volume when we have this call. Another thing to look at up here in the top left, we have where we're at. So we can see as we page through the file, the time changes. That's just how far into the file we are. If I just keep going through again, we're getting a lot of Swainson's thrushes. That looks like a great cheek thrush right there. Go through a little bit more. Let's see if we get a nice loud call. If I go back for a second, this looks like some sort of, this may be sound from the highway. This might have been like a truck rattling. I'm about a mile away from a highway. So you can see about how fast I'm paging through it. It doesn't take long to, to visually look at a page and see that there's nothing of interest. And with things like Swainson's thrushes on during migration, I get so many of them per night that I don't have to stop and look at every single one. Okay, here's an interesting call. We'll just, let's say we wanted to save this one. All you have to do is highlight the area that you want, which for me is usually about two seconds before to two seconds after the call. And then we go up here to the Save Active Selection As. It's like a floppy disk with a red square. And that's the button that you would click, and then it brings up the save. And then just whatever you had highlighted here, 
it'll just save that as its own little audio file. And then that's what I would then upload to eBird. Um, as far as playing, again, there's not sound, but you have a play control up here for listening. You might be able to hear that. I have it playing over my speaker, so my microphone may pick it up. You can use you can use spacebar to control when it plays. Um, if you're if you stop it while it's playing and you want to start from the beginning, you can hit the stop button and it'll go back to the beginning of the selection. Um, you can type in a time. Let's say you know that you want to go to two hours into this recording. You can do two colon zero zero colon zero zero. That'll take you to two hours in. It's a little bit slow right now just because I. I have this file saved on an external hard drive. Sometimes it does slow down when I'm going through and analyzing as well. So here we can see I just randomly picked two hours in and we have some sort of call. Um, the thresh calls are going to be mainly between 2 kilohertz and 5 kilohertz. So we're looking at this somewhat lower range, whereas things like warblers and sparrows are more in the upper range. And the cuckoos are um, like vertical lines that are low. Let's just go through this a little bit more, just to give you a sense of what a typical file looks like. You have all kinds of random noises happening. Um, the bird calls tend to have some sort of shape to them, so you can see these, these just little vertical lines are probably just something clanging. It's probably not a bird call. Again, this looks maybe like a veery or a gray cheek thrush. Another low call, probably a Swainson's thrush. Again, more Swainson's thrushes. So what I would do is I would just go through this whole file and when I find loud calls like this one, you can see the call looks very dark and we can see it has a volume spike. So that might be a good example to save and to upload to eBird. Now this was a, a, an example of a night of a lot of activity. So you can see pretty much every 10 seconds we're getting multiple calls. Some nights you go an hour or more without any calls if the winds aren't good. These, um, these high ones are probably chipmunks. I have a chipmunk that likes to run around on the roof and uh, the little squeaks of a chip of a chipmunk are very high frequency like this. There's uh, some sort of warbler or sparrow, sort of a double ascending. Um, another thing I could do, so with the warblers and sparrows, a lot of times you need a closer look. So what I could do is highlight that and then use these, this section here that has the magnifying glasses um, the buttons here on the left. If you highlight an area, you can use this leftmost one to zoom in, zoom to selection. Okay, so once you do that though, you've now sort of changed the resolution. So you have to go up to this, uh, this, uh, this adjustment that says adjust focus. And so if I adjust that to the left a bit, we can see that it becomes clearer. And we can see it's a double ascending. I think there's a handful of sparrows and warblers that have that type of call. I don't know that you can pin this to one exactly the species. And then if we want to get back out, we can hit the zoom out button. And now we probably want to reset this, the resolution to 512. And it's back just like it was. Again, sometimes when you click, it doesn't change right away. Um, if it becomes too much of a problem, I found it closing it out and reopening it fixes it. So again, a lot of a lot of thrush calls. You know, all these low ones are pretty much Swainson's thrush type calls. Here's a sort of a mid-range buzz of something like maybe an indigo bunting. Is a very loud buzz. 
that's probably also an indigo bunting. So the overall process is a visual one. I go through visually 10 seconds at a time like this, just page through it, page through it, and when I see calls that I'm interested in, I stop. And a lot of calls you can identify without having to listen to them. You just get used to what a black-billed cuckoo looks like, what a yellow-billed cuckoo looks like, what a gray cheek thrush looks like, what an indigo bunting looks like. And so um, you get a sense of, of what you're actually what you actually have without having to stop and listen to each and everything, which would just really slow the process down. When you're recording, you know, eight hours of audio a night that you're going to go through, or at this time of year is probably about six hours I was going through. Um, maybe a little bit more. I think I started this recording at about 9.30 p.m. And I ended it probably at, well, the recording went farther, but about 4 a.m. is when the local Robin starts singing and it's basically the end of anything useful. But when you have that much, you know, hours and hours and hours every night, you need a process that you can get through your recordings quickly. Again, another buzz, maybe an indigo bunting. Um, common yellow throat's another one that's somewhat similar. So that's the overall method that I'm using to go through my nocturnal flight calls. And if anyone has any questions, let me know.